Here are the top 10 Skype for Business tips and tricks. Welcome to Sealy Training. I am Jason Sealy. Skype for Business is a great tool, not to be confused with the Skype Personal Edition. The Business Edition is designed for a corporate environment and has a much broader group of features. Here are some tips and tricks to make Skype for Business work for you. Number one, creating Skype meetings in Outlook. Skype for Business ties directly into Outlook. All you have to do is click on a new Skype meeting when you're in your calendar. Skype automatically sets your dial-in numbers and a link to your Skype meeting. Just type your contacts in the two, put in your subject line, and hit send. Number two. Record a meeting in 1080p HD. When you've started a Skype meeting, you can just click the dot 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 in the lower right corner and start recording. That records your meeting in 720p. If you want to set it to a higher resolution, go into your Skype settings, click on recording, and check this 1080p full HD setting. Number three, share a PowerPoint file. If you intend to share a large PowerPoint file in Skype for Business, the best option is to load it to the cloud. Click on the Share Content, select Share PowerPoint Files, choose your PowerPoint file, and it uploads it to the cloud. Now this document can be viewed by other people without having to wait for an install of your files. Once you've loaded it, click on the Share Content button again. You can go into Manage Content and you can control settings for the file, remove it, lock it, make it available for only certain people, and many other settings. Number four, automatically update calendar presence information. In Skype for Business settings, under Personal, turn on this check mark for update my presence based on my calendar information. This will update your contacts and let them know when you're in a meeting. You can also check the box to let private or public contacts know this information. Number five, set do not disturb when meeting. Also under the Skype for Business settings, if you go into status, there's an option here to show me as do not disturb when I share my desktop. Use this to notify people that you're in a meeting and that you do not want to receive any phone calls or get any instant messages. Number six, Allow external communications. In your Office 365 Admin Center, click on Skype for Business. Under Organization, click on External Communications. If you check this box, it will let people use Skype for Business to communicate with Skype users outside your organization. This allows you to receive and send Skype instant messages to people that are external from your internal network. By default, this is on except for block domains, and down here you can add any domains that you want to block from communication. Number seven, customize meeting invitations. Within the same area of the admin center for Skype, there is an online meetings tab. Here you can actually set up customizations for your meeting invitations. You can create a logo, you can add a URL to a help file. You can also put a legal URL, and you can establish some footer text that will show up at the bottom of your Skype meetings. This information appears between these two dashed lines of your meeting invite. Number eight, check your call quality dashboard. Another useful feature in the Skype Admin Center is the call quality dashboard. You can access this by going into Tools, Click on Skype for Business Online Call Quality Dashboard. The Call Quality Dashboard is only useful if you have the Skype phone capability integrated into your Skype for Business environment. It shows charts of the activity of your phone calls and whether the quality is good, poor, or unclassified. It shows you monthly and daily trends, and it gives you a good idea of the number of calls that are being performed across your network and whether the quality is good enough. If you see a large area of poor communication, that's an indicator that something's wrong on your network or something impacted your internet connection. 
Number nine, add mobile and home phone numbers. In the Skype settings, under phones, there are multiple phone numbers that you can fill in. Most of the time, this information is populated from Office 365 or Exchange, but if they're missing, you can actually put them in yourself, add your mobile phone number, add your home or an other phone number, and make that available in the contact card to other people that are viewing your contact information. And finally, number 10, meeting options. If you wanna have an effective Skype meeting, make sure you click on the meeting options for your calendar entry. Under the permissions, you have choices here of who you want to wait in the lobby, if you set it to only me, the meeting organizer, then everyone else will be left waiting in the lobby until you start your meeting. If you leave anyone, that means that everyone will be able to connect into the meeting without having to wait in the lobby. Also, you can choose who to make the presenter. If you're the only one doing a presentation, then you should set only me. That way, other people won't override your meeting by presenting their desktop on top of you. If you choose anyone, then everyone will become a presenter automatically for the meeting, and you'll be prepped if you want to transfer back and forth between different people's screens. You can also remember these settings so that the next meeting you create will have those same settings as well. And this concludes the top 10 Skype for Business tips and tricks. I hope this information is useful for you. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate your support.